What's going on, guys? The time has come for Black Dragon Gaming's first ever maiden voyage, though you can't see it right now in OBS, in Fantasy Grounds at Tales from the Greenwich Colonies. Did I get it right? I got it right, didn't I? Yeah. Haha, <laughs> I am great. And you know who else is great? Tiki is great, and Ross is great, and Jason is great for the support on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Also, the Gorilla King is here, and he'll he'll kinet assist you to death. And his race is now playable in the playtest, so that's spooky. Doesn't have the spell resistance, so that's less spooky. But it also means I could stat out Yuli <laughs> as he was a Sphere for Netflix. Anywho, this is our first session together. Josh is not with us. Perez is sleepy sleepy somewhere. Ross, take it away. Welcome back once again to uh, Tales from the Greenwich Colony, where we last left off. You all had your various different reasons for coming together and boarding the ship to get to the Greenwich Colonies. Some of you are dealing with family issues. Others are just simply looking for what is believed to be the beer brewed by the god of heroes. For the most part, you all happened upon the ship completely just because of luck of the draw. It happened to be the only cargo ship of its type in dock or whatever that was leaving as you all arrived to go to the Greenwich Colonies. The ship is known as the Emerald Cutter. It's not a large ship. It's a two-sail, three-story, although the two-and-a-half kind of, because the bottom half's mostly keel. For the most part, it's used just for, you know, shipping, minor excursions. You guys could have ascertained by the cargo they were carrying on and off, it probably traded in what wouldn't be considered luxury goods if you lived in, like, Galerion or the Inner Seas, or, you know, just, like, the more tamed parts of Galerion, but out here in the boons and the wildlands, it's very valuable. We're talking things like nails and some beads, ceramics, stuff like that that you could theoretically make out on the frontiers, but it'd be a pain to do it. As you all are just trying along on these sort of open waters, um, do any of you all attempt to make contact with one another? You all would notice that the f basically all five of you at one point or another would come across realization this person isn't a sailor, this person's an adventurer. Like, it's very clear to those of you that are more experienced in nature, Ren, you can very clearly tell... Um, well, actually, it wouldn't be your... F but yeah, Brain, on your very first day there, you can tell that Bowser seems to be someone who is definitely not carrying himself like a sailor. He drinks like a sailor, but he does not carry himself like a sailor. And one too many seasick incidents have led you to kind of confirm that fact. The same thing occurred when... Uh, the same thing occurred when you saw Perez. He can't hold his liquor! There's that was you. you they're talking about you, lad. You can't hold yeah. your liquor. You're not, you're not there yet. Never uh, mind, I'm not here yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, same thing also occurs when both of you see Perez come up onto the deck. And hell, both of you guys are surprised that he isn't like some sort of beast. He looks like an animal, despite the fact he's very clearly human. Perhaps something about the myths of humans and monkeys being related is true. You don't know. But he has been very... He's not been quiet. He's been very boastful about how he's going out on a quest to kill some sort of famed beast. A jabber something or another. You don't really pay him much attention. He's kind of you guys have kind of written him off as a not safe in the membrane. And then there is the goblin that appeared as you guys were just about to head off. Like you were making your last stop in what could be considered civilized lands. And a goblin just walks on board with a harmonica and... Ooh, your other weapons. I, I just remember the harmonica thing, because that was the most humorous part of your entire setup. Breastplate, a glaive, and a harmonica. And with, with yep. uh, yep. uh, I can't think of the name of the, the ancestry feat now, but the one that debuffs the will save, maybe the harmonica is all he needs if he wants, like, a scared-to-death build. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, a very intimidating harmonica. Those things can make some shrill noises. If you, know you just hit the them. hardest oh. dissonant chord you can possibly hit, and everyone explodes. Oh, oh! That's I cool. hadn't even thought that that was something I was going to go for, but death by harmonica. Oh no! Oh death no! By I gave, harmonica. I gave the bard. I gave the bard a good idea. Oh no! Next thing I know, he's going to be seducing the main villain. Thanks Crap for basket. heritage stuff, Paizo. 
Thank you for heritage stuff. Now work on better sorcerer powers. Oh, hey man, the ancestral or the ancestral, the uh, the imperial blooded sorcerer is not bad at all. Neither is the demonic. I haven't really looked at the other two, but the I'll the spend phase. A, I'll spend the a spell point for plus one that. mastery level. Is Faye bad? Is, Faye's hey, not all that good. Do any of y'all hear voices? What? They're, the sailors they're, talk, to look they're at talking me. about books. <laughs> <laughs> they just kind of look around and um, and you even hear one say. Can that fellow even read? I doubt it. He does seem to be drinking too much liquor. Well, if he did know it, he probably forgot it, along with the rest of his memories of a sober I... life about a few miles back. I... There's, no, there's no such thing as too much liquor! I think there's just a sideways glance to you, Brent, from the sailor. <laughs> Says the one who constantly empties his belly so he can add more. At least the fish are happy. I haven't thrown up today. Make me a fortitude save, Tiki. Make me a fortitude (laughs) save. (laughs) You have have my shield. As just if the universe says, nope, you get impact with a particularly heavy wave. (laughs) Yeah, you have my shield, so you'll have to roll it. I will roll it. You haven't thrown up today, rogue wave. Uh, natural. Oh wait, that looks like a natural one on my screen. I can't Aww, see. That it. was a seven. That's... Twelve is. You you feel it come up, and they can see your cheeks puff up like a chipmunk, but you swallow it back down. Oh, that's right. You stay in there. I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> oh God, the sailor says, just looking at you with a face of disgust and horror. Hmm. Hmm. If I'm supposed to be doing something, I go do it. For the most part, it's been smooth sailing. My head. The my sailors, head. for the most part, have the job done. Your guy, to be honest, what you were brought on board for, if you didn't pay like a fee or something to get on, somehow the ape man uh, seemingly has his passage taken care of by someone that owns stock in the ship. Um, for the rest of you, though. You know, it seems as though you kind of agree to use your talents and whatnot to help out in more dangerous situations. Okay. The captain does warn you that there are some dangers to the sea, some creatures that lurk within in the occasional... Well, pirates aren't exactly the right word, maybe raiders. There is a pretty active naval force in the area. I have a question. Yes. Have we passed the part of the patrolled waters yet? Because You're, that would actually change my uh, sobriety levels. Yes, you are out. At this point, I'd say you're just getting outside the area where, like, the naval sort of alliances that monitor Arcadia would go, and you're not within the waters protected by the Greenwich colonies. Okay, so if we're actually in open waters, I may be acting the drunkard. I'm not as drunk as I think as y'all think I am. I I respect that. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, the character so, the character knows when to drink, when to actually be sober. So, like, there's occasionally like you get the feeling that sure raiders are something that's out there, but they're more so saying that as a buzzword. If you all were to press for information, it would definitely seem that they're not afraid of raiders, but instead something else from the waters. They're not certain what. Occasionally, ghost ships have been seen in the distance, and while you guys haven't seen any on their voyage, the captain himself has mentioned one time he came across a ghost ship, and it freaked him out. Would you roll me an intelligence check off my sheet, please? Nine. What are you rolling intelligence for? Okay, yeah, I don't ask. Okay. Okay. Um, I was I was giving myself a DC on whether or not I would actually ask them about things, but no, if I only rolled a nine, I wasn't smart enough to think of it. Fair, fair. Something about being ale-addled comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll take up residence in the forward part of the ship and keep my eyes open. All righty, then. Okay. I think what is the... Elu wants to go and have a drinking contest with some sailors, just because I don't look like the sort of person who could put it away. 
Do you I'm, actually? I'm curious. What what heritage did you take, Levi? Big Belly. Oh God, the of one that can eat and drink did. whatever. <laughs> Just get seawater. Goes ham. Okay, so I, I would actually like to point out there's a drinking contest. Even though it's a goblin, uh, I'm gonna be there watching because I want to see this. Good. Um. Yeah. Sure. You would get a few pe- a couple of um, uh, soldiers or not soldiers, sailors, um, would be interested in joining you in this little escapade of yours. Okay. Um, it's like I really should be good, but I want to do the drinking contest, but I really should be good. So, um, <sighs> yeah, there are going to be two other sailors that are going to be with you. Okay. Normally I'd say four to two roll best of three, best of three wins. Uh, okay. Bear in mind, we're not doing the cliche you take a shot and another shot and another shot and the first person to pass out loses. Because that's how people die in drinking contests. Oh yeah. That's not how drinking contests really should work. Instead, it's more so like you all take a shot, you know, kind of let it settle in your bellies comfortably to where if you take another shot, you you know, like you let the effect settle in before you take another one. The cellular yeah. These are men who drink beer more than water which is commonplace but still it's like these are men that are used to drinking liquor and they know how this stuff works so yeah would you give me your first fortitude roll okay and i will roll for both of them plus five that's a 24 oh yeah no one of the guards just kind of like clenches his nose and tries to swallow it back only to get it choked in what you guess to be one of his windpipes and he heaves a lot of it up much to the amusement of the rest of the crowd. Another sailor, you know, seems to be keeping up with you. He takes a shot back and just kind of chuckles a bit, expecting, you know, you to kind of react to the burn. But everybody just kind of watches in amazement as you just take the glass. And you're just like, you just are standing. You're just sitting there like you drank water. Yeah. Yeah. It's, right. So in, in the in-between, while we're giving it the time to settle down i want to work on chatting up and making friends with the people here rather than just you know just trying to beat people yeah it's yeah it's just an uh, excuse to start in some chats roll me a diplomacy that's what i'd say while he's doing that i'm Ooh, watching him to see so if he had any four. kind of effects as you're trying to like turn around and talk to it you accidentally kind of like trip up one of the people walking by and his spear splatters across the top of your head a bit he, of course, apologizes yeah. profusely and helps you clean it up. So these, guys, these guys seem to be... I mean, they look at you funny because you're a goblin, but at the same time, you're, you're a bona fide paladin. You're obviously a man of the cloth, so... Oh, yeah. It's sort of that you're a paladin, very clearly a religious person, very clearly a, a good god religious person, oh, yeah. so... They're kind of like, uh, okay then. This guy seems to be on the right path. Elu, let's go ahead and roll round two. Plus five, again. Uh, would you roll me that again? Because you I mean, got a tie. You got a tie with one dude. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. One from before stops playing around and takes another shot, but you're you're still ahead. Not an issue, you know, you not taking the bravado, but just going at it like, to win from the very beginning has definitely given you an edge. And the one from before who kind of took it as a joke is now taking it a bit more serious. But once again, he did not brace himself for the hit. He just let it hit him as like to show off. But that's now not helping him like at all. Okay. So you got to I treat successes as critical successes for things I drink. Well, and you you barely, you don't even feel it at this point. You're just like, eh, this is, you actually, at some point, kind of just like look at your glass, almost wondering if it's water or vodka. <laughs> He's taking it like Fuck. a champ. Uh, last, potentially last round, you just need three to win. Uh, unfortunately, the one from before manages to keep up with you. The other one, however, kind of just backs off a bit, coughing. Like, all right, I can feel that starting to hit me. I should back off. Ugh. Next time, though, Goblin. Next time, though, little man, I'll get you good. And I won't take I, you as a joke anymore. Oh, it's too, too hefty of a voice. Ha-ha! 
Yeah, that, that that's it. That's 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 it. That's it. <laughs> Remember to um uh, Elu and I believe it's to Elu and Bowser, you guys have an extra hero point. Normally you start with yep. one. You guys both have an extra one for making me happy in our respective prologues. Yeah. Yes. P- uh, pleasing the DM. So finally, let's go at this one more time. Oh, you should beat this. Oh yeah, no, you just like once again chug. You actually at this point just kind of like chug it down, look at it, and then flat up just look at the person who's giving you vodka and say, "Okay, seriously, is this? Are you giving me water or something?" Like you actually like start. Hey, you actually look don't for the water. Don't water my vodka down. All right, and I see him drinking this just like water, right? Oh yeah, no, he is very clearly not even reacting to what is at this point four shots of vodka. All right, so. How much is left in that bottle of vodka? Uh, about half. I'd try to uh, see if I could uh, get the, the bottle off of the sailor. Uh, he's kind of like, oh, no, no. See, he holds it out, and as he holds it out, you hey, just kind of yank it out of his hands. It's, it's not for me. I want this. Uh, want to up the ante a bit. You know, the kind of small crowd that's assembled just kind of looks at you. Kind of like, explain. Well, here's the thing. Whichever one wins in this particular thing, if they can finish the bottle, I've got something special in me pack I might part with. I'm, I'm testing my luck here. But I'm going to try. Like, I'm going to... Like, I haven't even noticed this alcohol yet. Yeah, no. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'll drink some water. <laughs> okay. The other I guy like just kind of, like, one. looks to you. The other guy just looks to you and is like, I have to work tomorrow. I best not take that bet unless the captain flays me alive. Uh, would you roll me I'm one minute? On, I can't make a goblin voice, but the statement is I'm planning on working tomorrow. Would you roll me one last four to two? Ooh. Uh oh. This one, you just chug it back and it goes chug, 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 chug. And somebody accidentally n- knocks the back of your stool. Hard enough that if it was a human, they wouldn't really be bothered. But since you're a goblin, it tips you back and you accidentally actually get a bit of the vodka up your nose. And then it hurts. And you're like, oh. Uh. Like you see, like all you, all everybody sees the vodka go into his nose. It's just like, oh, because that would hurt. That's alcohol, like right into the brain stems. That's, that's not, that doesn't feel good. Like water alone is bad up there. Vodka. Oh, God, no. <laughs> If anyone is listening, there's a slight chuckle from the bow. All right. I'd win, but uh, what's Wait, the reaction? Can the I roll a performance call? check to make it even more dramatically funny? Yes. Because that sounds like a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you try to perform dramatically. You know, kind of try to over dramatize it, only sad. for the t- bar stool underneath you to fall out from underneath you, and you just go, "Oh shit!" As you impact your head hard onto the table, you're kind of been like taking the shots on and thunk onto the ground, unconscious. <laughs> and all of the sailors just kind of go deathly silent as they're just like, "Oh shit!" Oh, that's pretty great, actually. <laughs> Can I, I imagine this only makes, to bring him around? I imagine this only makes Bryn laugh even harder. Well, I'm not a loud guy, so chuckle, shake head, scan ocean. Can I do a medicine check to see if I can help bring him around? Yeah, sure. For the for those of you watching, I'm driving a truck, so he's having to make, make my rolls for me. Skills, medicine. Ah, oh, you're trained in it. Yes, I am. I also have the battle medic. Uh, uh, you rolled a four plus four, so that's eight. Um, you've got a pulse. He's alive. <laughs> There's no bleeding. You might have a slight concussion, but you don't really have anything other than that. You don't know goblin skulls. Like you, the most you know about goblin skulls is the best way to crack them open. Ugh. That really was bad. I mean, whoever tripped, the, you know, he would have had that one. There's a general consensus among the crowd, like, yeah, 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 because you were rolling hella well earlier, Elu. So I, it's uh, like, it hurt so much to just 
you know. <laughs> yeah, you get cocky. I, to do this, but I say he won it. Everyone else? Seeing consensus. There's, you get a, yeah, yeah, you know, like, it's a general sort of, like, agreement sort of murmur race first through the crowd. You know, they're all like, yeah, even the guys that he was drinking were like, oh, yeah, that's fair. All right, so I'd reach into the, get the small vial, the one of the, you know, the precious liquid I received in my opening. Ooh. Oh. You win some, you lose some. Don't worry. I'll figure out how to make you. But when he comes around, you get to have a bit of a taste. <laughs> oh, if you can gonna... hold down, if you can hold your vodka like that, <laughs> I'm sure you'll appreciate some ale. Some, there's just kind of like a silence once again, and a few people are just looking at one another. Uh, Bryn, a person nearby to you says, is that supposed to be some sort of, like, drug? Oh, no, it's a special and He brew. says that really quiet, like, so only Brent okay. can hear it over the crowd. Oh, okay, well, just looking around since I did say it was something special. I have here a special brew. You can only get it on the Green Witch Isles. That's why I'm heading there. One taste and I dropped everything I had my whole life at home under mountain. To come here and learn how to make this brew. The fellow just leans over once again, Bryn. Yeah, definitely drugs. <laughs> we can only hope. And eventually at some point somebody says, Wait, are you talking about the heroes, brew? Hey! There's a bit more of a murmur in the guy that you're talking to, Bryn, kind of actually goes from, this is a fool to, wait, he actually has a bit of hero brew? And there's just general crowd, and then somebody says, how'd you get your hands on it? Well, back in town, where we are uh, boarded, and I'd actually give the uh, the inn, that I, or the, you know, the, the bar that I was at. The mm -hmm. barkeep there has a bit of a connection. Yeah, well, uh, I made a promise to him that if I ever came up here and learned how to make it, which is my plan, that I'd give him a constant connection. There's, you know, agreements. And for the most part, that's kind of where the night's going to go. You know, some more merrymaking, some more friendship. Eventually, Elu will wake up in one of the hammocks that's reserved for him, the vial kind of on a, on a nearby, on the nearby sort of uh, dresser that is reserved for the people who are really re 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 staying in that room to store their personal belongings and and we move forward to the next morning as you all are kind of getting over from drinkings and uh the drinkings and the boozes and the partying and the talking and the general you know like pastimes um the vial would also have a, a note under it written in uh, common. It's actually a little steadier than you would expect. It's like, hey, I think you won this anyway. All right, then. Uh, I will have had a minimum amount of ale, more water than anything else as available. And for the most part, I'm hanging out, keeping an eye on the ocean, and uh, whittling. Mm-hmm. Um, also, so you know, the uh, the vial that's there is not the actual one I was originally keeping it in. I poured it into a different one. I kept the empty container so that I could actually open it and smell it. <laughs> uh. Um... So, who do you think would be the first person to go up on deck? Uh, me, because the uh, I ran out of alcohol. You sort of drunkenly stumble up the bar, up to the top of the um, up to the top of the uh, ship, kind of looking around for some sailors to see if maybe they knew where you could get some booze. And as you're just kind of stumbling around, that's when you hear somebody just shout loudly. Man of the blood! And a loud sound of a bell going ding, ding, ding. 
this kind of wakes all the rest of you up for the most part if you weren't already awake and you just hear sailors frantically running up the stairs to get to some sort of position bowser you kind of like run over to one of the sides then you see off in the distance perhaps a few hundred feet away what looks to be a piece of driftwood and as you stare at it a bit closer you realize there's a person hanging on to it what do you do um i'm a dwarf i'm mountain folk not ocean folk so uh anything i could do would probably be limited i mean unless it looks like he's going under and not you know we're not going to make it in time i'd pretty much just be trying to grab a life preserver to toss to uh to once we get close to toss that way um i'm pretty sure the sailors are going to have more to do with this than i am uh you do see a few of them seeming to drag out what seems to be a lifeboat and starting to take it over to where a nearby side so as to try and perhaps get over to him by by a rowing by this point bren and elu you guys both also be upstairs as you see this going on i'd run to lend a hand to the people with the boat all right then you do so take position at the bow and uh have my bow and arrows ready all right then how dangerous do the waters look right now compared to how they have been pretty tame uh i'd notice the the would i notice the bow and arrow uh dwarf because i don't think i actually had seen his weapon before i don't how focused would you be on getting this person out um I mean, I know I'm not going overboard. I mean, I'm just trying to keep an eye out for things that might help. Then, yeah, you would notice the dwarf with the bow and the arrow. Um, looking at him. Hey, can you shoot that thing with a uh, with a rope attached? No. Okay. I'm going to use message to try to talk to the person. Uh, you get you do feel a connection so you can say a message. Can you swim? After days of floating at sea, passing in and out of consciousness, and probably suffering from, at this point, severe dehydration, you start to think you see a ship on the horizon during one of your laps of consciousness, and eventually you start to hear noises, and the first words of human contact you have heard after days of being stranded at sea, floating lost in these wide open waters... It's a very high-pitched voice asking if you can swim. Mirden will simply come to realize Mirden can't swim the best and just wave his arm back and forth. Well, and you realize it's also I mean, a message spell. Stay. And Mirden cannot so cast talk. message. Mirden has sorcerer no. spells. Mirden has okay. druids. You get to talk respond. back to me. Oh, oh. Message says you can respond now. Oh, oh, tight. That's sweet. Okay, cool. <laughs> then, who are you? He's taking too long to get to useful information. I'm jumping in the water. Um, well, okay then. <laughs> Athletics plus four, and it's decently tame. Uh, yeah, sure. As he jumps in the water, I'd toss the, uh, the uh, life preserver over uh, over towards him as well, so he can take that out with him. Uh, would you give me that athletics roll then, Elu? Okay, oh, I'm, I've got hero points for this. <laughs> He's got two hero points, he can't remember. That's uh, plus five, you said? Twenty. Twenty. Plus four. Plus four. Yeah. Uh, Elu, you just dive in into the water. Thankfully, since you're wearing a breastplate, it doesn't actually um, give you all that much trouble. Or did you take actually, it off? If I would have, like, I'm assuming I woke up at some point and tried to normally sleep and took it off, and I didn't assume I had time to put it back okay. on this morning. Fair enough. Then, yeah, you just jump into the water and start swimming towards the person. It's not difficult for you as i mentioned the waters are pretty calm it does take you like a few minutes about five or so this is where i drop the bombshell that due to the isolation of your like island your backstory and everything the only race you know of is human okay all the other races could be considered myths specifically elves and dwarves would have been myths to your people that surprises mirden quite a bit mirden will Meriden is going to roll a nature check. 
Bearden's gonna say a quick <laughs> player to the green, and there'll be a little whoosh in his beard as the wind picks up, and I cast Guidance, so this nature check is one higher than it says it is. It's a 15. Yeah, because it shows that you rolled a flat 10. Oh, fair. Uh, Ick. Yeah. With a 15, this is very clearly not an aquatic creature. And there is no land around. That thing very obviously had to come from the ship. And it also very clearly, at this point, as you notice, has a life preserver with a rope. What Leading back to, once again, what you presume is the ship. Well, it clearly means me no harm, so... Mirden will allow Mirden's self to be dragged back to the ship to be surprised by two short bearded people. Hey! <laughs> yeah. So Elu, you get out there, you reach Mirden, uh, kind of grabbing onto this elder human man, and with the assistance of the crew and the life preserver, managed to just get the two of you pulled back on board. Eventually, as you two come up over the water, dripping, when not Mirden, you are dropped onto the deck. And for the, you are so like relieved to actually be on what could be considered solid ground. Like it's a ship, but it's still like you actually aren't submerged partially in water at the moment. That in and of itself is amazing to you. Uh, eventually, a cup, a person dressed in fancier clothes than the rest and another falling close behind him starts walking up between the groups of sailors like move aside move aside oh the poor fool looks like he's dehydrated thomas here sir hi cab he hands over a water skin which the captain then kneels down to about where you're kind of just sitting on the deck regaining breath mirrored in and offers you a water skin here through hell Mirden will simply nod and take the water skin and down it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you you drink it all, and the guy looks at you concerned. The first lieutenant says, well, ain't you lucky? A few more hours out there, and it looks like you would have start, you would have died of dehydration. Now that's, he just looks around at the ocean. That's a very disturbing way to die. Aye, aye, it is. I'm glad you found me, lads. Looking around, do I see the dwarves? Yeah, you see the dwarves. Yeah. So here's a deception check to keep my cool. I don't. The the macro may be incorrect. As I throw a no, okay, that's so it should. Be, yeah, no. So it should be one higher because I'm going to try to guidance myself and just oh, so green with a seven. Us. With a seven, you look around and you see. Oh yeah, there's a few humans. What the heck is that? As you look at the dwarves, and then you also see. Some other smaller people, as a couple of the sailors, are also halflings. In fact, the one that's in the crow's nest is a halfling. And then you also look over and see a man that looks like a mixture between a human and an ape. And at that point, you're kind of like, oh, God, what is going on here? Oh, lads, like, if you excuse me, lads, I, I need to go lay down. And I'm going to I assume they make the boats the same where I come from. I'm going to go where the beds are <laughs> as fast as I can. Um... As you start to go, the captain kind of like steps in your way, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, jeez. At least let me lead, have somebody lead you down to a bunk that's open. You, all right, you look like you've seen a ghost. Aye, it's, it's been a rough one. So you say, you say that oh. from, from Briatane, everything is very isolationist. Do I know any of the like major cities on Galarian by chance by name? No. Okay, um, uh, yeah. All right, here goes another deception check. I'll flavor it based on how well with guidance. Oh, I've rolled a four. That's a nine. So that means it's a nine. So I, I, uh, I, I'm a druid. It's the only thing that Mirden can spit out. Uh, <laughs> oh, I am a druid. I would suggest he make a perception check. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> because... All right. Because when I hear Druid, he, he might hear the sound of a bow being put back to full draw. Oi, Bryn, the captain says. Knock that off or I'm throwing you in the keel. Got it? Did I do something wrong? One of your kind murdered a child in my town. That's why I'm going where I'm going. 
that kind of draws everyone around to be quiet. Uh, here's a, actually, I didn't think I'd roll this out as fast as I am, but here is a lore, the green faith check. So I'm doing it live. That should be a plus three with guidance. It's a total of bad. I was <laughs> trying to identify what particular druidic orders might be responsible. You for would have killing. no clue what the druidic order is. Okay. But you do know of certain orders that are that believe that humans have grown too populous, like the humans have grown too populous, and you would know them to have occasionally attacked human settlements, particularly far out in the wilderness, so as to preserve the wilderness. Essentially, it's like population control to them. Okay. They see humans as an invasive species, and as such, remove them permanently well lad i don't know what happened to you but my order doesn't kill children my order sees to it that the sea and the sky and the storms maintain the balance of nature necessary to grow the crops we need to survive to burn the undergrowth necessary to keep the forest alive we don't we don't kill children oh i imagine some of us perhaps maybe Perhaps where you're from, nature has been encroached upon. Maybe someone went renegade, but I assure you, it's not me. Not where I'm from. Not us. Mirden, would you roll me a diplomacy? Is there? This I can't help but feel that that's appropriate. Bam! Natural 20, <laughs> yeah. Bryn, this is actually like... This is the first time you've met a druid. <laughs> That hasn't actively, like, killed someone you care about. Like, the only druid you've ever met was, like, before that, like, proper druid, not a ranger with perhaps some nature under nature spellcasting, like a multi-class or something. This is the first, like, man that kind of fits the stereotypical druid look. And he very clearly and adamantly is not lying to you. Like, you can see that he is being honest with every bone in his body. Take the arrow off knock. and. Say, then perhaps you should tell us what happened. All right, here goes another deception check to see if I just blurt out, I'm a druid! <laughs> Boom! Okay, no, so that's a, yeah, that's a 21 after mods and yep. guidances. Well, lad, I'm from, I'm from Avistan. We'd set sail for across the seas. The ship hired me on as... Keeper of the waves, one to part the storms, as it were, and we were set upon by bandits. My ship was sunk. I fear that everyone I set sail with now rests at the bottom of the sea. And the roll to tell how much organic fertilizer that is. <laughs> uh, so that's a twenty-one captain, over. Kind of it's a twenty-one over the the perception DCs. Of everybody around, which should be like like my perception DC is thirteen. Um, so I actually minutes. rolled something else for the captain. Okay, he's going to pause and turn to you and say to Mirden, Avastan, right? Aye. Right. See, I've sailed all around the world, all around the world, from the eastern end to the western end of Galerion. Hell. I've even been up to the crown of the world. I've never heard once of this land that you're talking about, though. You haven't heard of Avistan? It's the big northern continent. Nah, we tend to call that Arcadia. Never even heard of... Avistan? It's... If I don't know cities, do I know, like, basic geography? You would know constellations. I mean, okay. you might know a bit about geography, potentially, but once again... Isolation is... Outside the islands, that's mostly... Yeah, that's mostly, like, lores and legends of pre... Like, if... From an outsider looking in, the oldest sort of records your people would have of, Larry, of like, the rest of the world... Probably dates back to the era of heroes. Okay. We're talking a few millennia at least. Fair enough. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna throw a diplomacy check down. 
Boom. Oh, oh, it's higher than that. The number is greater. The number is seven. Just it's, it's due west, lad. Across the sea. Goblin move is heard as Bo goes uh, back to full draw. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goblin says, holding up his hands. Do you... Do uh, you Bryn? What was the role to figure out if he's lying through his teeth? That's a perception it's check perception. over my... Over w my, perception. Uh, bluff DC. So, uh, that was... I rolled this. Whenever he started. So it'd be 16 plus... Four, because I count as expert. Oh, yeah, so, that's definitely, definitely, that, oh. that slays my deception in DC. Not critically. Yeah, deception you know, DC is lying. 20, or 13, rather. I, for the record, for the record of everyone watching, uh, oh. the captain is an experienced man, so instead of him rolling perception, I had him roll, like, lore, geography, which that's he actually true. has, oh, he's actually expert in, because... He's a captain of a ship who's been traveling for years. Oh god, when I pointed west, I pointed west from California, didn't I? It's kind of like you were pointing west, expecting to point at Africa, only to end up pointing at China. Yeah, nice. He's lying through his teeth. I don't I'd think... Step in front of, I'd step in front of the uh, his shot. Aye. But I don't think he was lying about not killing the baby. At the very least... Doesn't seem like he's from these lands, or doesn't recall where he is correctly. Could be problems of amnesia or other memory loss. Dehydration and being forced down the open waters like that can drive a man a bit mad. No intent, no ill intent. Meaned by that, he says, glancing to you. None taken, none taken. Yeah, how about we let him get some rest, get some food and some more water in him. Let him get his sparings together. For all we know, he could be lying to us because of some sort of political issue from where he comes from. It, it's kind of a very specific answer, and like a few of the sailors just kind of glance at the captain. Captain shrugs. Would I tell you that this would be the fourth time that's happened to me? Would you believe it? But seriously, Thomas, find this man a bunk. Aye, sir, the first lieutenant says, coming around to you, Mirden. Here, sir, I know of an open bunk in one of the rooms downstairs. Let me Let me guide you to it. Hi, that'd be quite nice. Thank you a lot. And I'll turn and follow the guy. Yeah, he leads you down into the deck below. Uh, feel free to just use any of those sort of bed things. Those are, are here. I can move you onto one. This one in here is open. Fair enough. Mirden probably just sees the bunk and like flops on it real hard. A oh, you were also given sleep. another water skin. You were also given another water skin. <laughs> yeah. It's like, make sure you get plenty of fluid, but not too fast. Otherwise, you'll end up hurting yourself. Nods and chugs and falls asleep. All right, at that point, the sailors start getting back to work. The captain kind of gestures for Bryn, Elu, and Bowser to come to him. Like, I need to talk to the three ah. of you. Hey. Yes, Captain. Um, and he'll actually lead you down to the second floor, down where near Mirden is, and lead you back into his quarters. Okay. And and for the record, if you can you see his quarters? Yes, I can. I can as exactly well. Are they? And it dawns oh, on okay. it dawns on me now that I know exactly how I'd want to set this up in OBS, but doing it right now in OBS would be Thanks. really tacky and a lot of draggy and stuff. But next time we'll definitely have it like I just it dawns on me like cut it this way and it will be great. Next. Yeah, that tends to be how this sort of stuff happens. Yeah, we are so, brand yeah. new to Fantasy Grounds. I am liking it so far, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I am too. The captain kind of walks inside to the cabin, earns his quarters, brings you all in, pulls out a chair, sits down. All right, I'm going to be frank with you all. This is around the part where the three of you, and you start taking your own weight for being on this ship. And if that fellow really is a druid, then I expect he'll be helping you all out, too, soon enough. Captain, please do not take this the wrong way. But I trust that man farther than I can throw him. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I get to say who walks the plank. This is your ship. 
I am at your orders. Nods his head at that. But to be honest with you, Bryn, I don't blame you. Magic casters are odd folk, none intended, sir. He says, kind of gesturing to you, Elu. None taken. But in a higher pitch voice. Yeah. I mean, it tends to be that you get into magic and stuff like that because something weird happened to you. But I don't doubt that this fellow is honest when he says that he didn't kill any babies. To read a man when he's lost that sort of moral capacity, when he doesn't even care enough to even think that a child's life could be worth more than just a fleeting thought. Either way, I prefer not to meet those men anytime soon, which is, once again, why I have you all. When he says uh, he doesn't care to meet anyone like that, very, very cold smile on my face. Because it's clear I meet someone like that very badly. Oi, hmm. if it's true, you're after a baby killer. I could put aside the drink for a while if you need some help. For now, it's my hunt. If you ever want to let me in on it, anyone who could kill a baby needs to be put down. Is this happening with an earshot of Mirden? I imagine Mirden is passed out. No, yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> Never <Yeah>. mind. <laughs> Like, I hate to assume too much. No, you, you, yeah, I'm, I'm you probably did just, just trying to find you. all the aloe vera that I can ever find. I am for sunburned. <laughs> the Celt has been lost at sea for days. This is about the point where I get to telling you what I'm actually afraid of being encounter- we encounter in on these waters. So, have any of you all ever had the honor, and he says that with a very pompous, overly dramatized sort of tone, the honor to be to the crown of the world. I'll shake my head now. The ice up there is hard, the land is cold, and there's all sorts of for lack of a better phrase, and a desire for me to just pass past all these arcane dibble-dabbles. There's a Portals, I guess you can say, to many different places. A lot of elemental portals, particularly. And we're starting to head up into the area in which these portals could theoretically release elementals. And with the waters not having many beasts or anything in them that would stop them from traveling this way. That tends to be our biggest concern. Dealing with elementals and creatures of the like. Now, I don't presume this will be a problem for you all. After all, these are lesser beings. They're not full-fledged elementals. At least the full-fledged ones I've never encountered this far south. But uh, just that is the, the first thing that came to mind. There are some other things out there, but they're so far exotic, and this isn't exactly the right climate for them, nor the right time of year, that I don't expect them to appear. Well, then, by your leave, sir, uh, I think I'll uh, see what's happening in the forward crow's nest. Very well. Well, I must ask you all to leave now. I do have some paperwork I need to fill out now that we found a drifter at sea. And this, I think it's a good place to cut it off for the time. Alrighty. Very wonderful. My deception poo is weak today (laughs) but it's a lot of fun and i'm also i'm definitely liking fantasy grounds a lot though literally it like halfway through the session i'm sitting like oh that's how again how i should cut it on obs to make it fit and look good so you'll see it next time sorry you didn't see it this time but big thanks to doug from fantasy grounds for hooking us up with the works and again well this is coming out way in the future probably at some point in the nearest future we'll have a how-to fantasy grounds video for everybody out there who's been hankering for it but That's all we have. Ross, thanks for jamming, guys. Thanks for hanging out. And again, as always, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. We'll see you next week. Say bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Peace.